angels according to hebrews are ministering spirits on behalf of those who are heirs of salvation so they're involved in our lives before we come to the knowledge of who we are and they're also involved after we come to the knowledge of who we are so they're assigned to us to protect us so they're guardian angels so-called who are alongside us to help us discover our identity in sonship and then they're help, there to help us outwork that identity in sonship so they can protect us and there are lots of physical stories of angels saving people from physical harm um, because they're there to try and help and guide and keep us from harm um, they're there um, to be involved in our outworking who we are so if we have a t something that we believe the father desires us to be involved with angels are there to help us in that involvement angels are not going to want to help us if we're doing our own thing because they know our own thing is going to get us into a, a problematic situation so they're not going to help us do things which are going to be contradictory to us being blessed so they want us to be blessed and they want to help us in that blessing. So we can work and cooperate with the angels. They can work with us. We can assign them tasks. So we can assign them things in everyday life to help us outwork our identity in everyday life. So often they don't want to draw attention to themselves. So it's not like they stand in front of us, ob uh, obscuring our view of God or life. They're usually behind us or alongside us because they want us to be focused fully on our relationship with God. And they're there to help us in that relationship with God. There are earthly angels and there are heavenly angels. So there are angels that are assigned around our lives in this dimension in which you can engage with them talk to them interact with them sometimes they may become visible physically most of the time they're only visible spiritually but you can engage with them see them and talk to them and communicate with them you know they they're not there to replace god and they're not there uh, unless god gives them some thing to tell us generally god will speak to us um, but sometimes they may well have something that can be a message because there are messenger angels like Gabriel and others in the Bible that came with a message. Um, and God may still use angels at times, but I think more and more because he's working in everybody and he is in everybody to outwork and reveal himself. He wants to do it relationally, not through a third party. So I would say the use of angels in the Old Testament is much less than the use of angels subsequent to people becoming aware the Holy Spirit is in them, that Jesus is working in them. There were angels that were used in the transition. You know, we have um, Peter sort of rescued because God sent angels to rescue him because people were praying. So people were praying for people, Peter's freedom from prison and God sent an angel to loose him from his chains. So there are actually very practical things there that angels could do if we can't do them ourselves. Once you begin to know your identity and your authority, there are things you can do that an angel could do for you, but you're in now in a position of maturity where you can do for yourself. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.